that with everybody. Um, we're going to do DDM 271, 272, 273, 274 today. And my focus is taking questions and helping you with your pronunciation and your understanding. Um, I don't really know if we'll have time to do role play. If we do, it won't be too much. It'll just be a little bit, uh, but we'll try to do some of that at the end. But I do hope you guys ask lots of questions. So first of all, I'm going to give you a brief summary of each lesson, starting with DDM 271, Oliver's Ultimate Experiment. That was about Oliver Sacks, and he wrote many very interesting books. And he also wrote the movie, uh, the story behind the movie uh, called Awakenings. He wrote the book in, the 19, in 1973, there you go, and the movie actually came out in 1990. And I saw the movie, it was okay, um, actually it was very good, but I, pref I would prefer to have read the, uh, the book, I'm sure. Um, he knew he was going to die. And he talked about it, and it was very interesting. Uh, pretty nice, nice story. Uh, Glasser, renowned neurologist, uh, Oscar-nominated film, practicing medicine, transforming, clinical experiences, relatable, recounted efforts, encephalitis, mental faculties, relating to, afraid, visually impaired, geometrical hallucinations, tumor, Op-ed, opened up about, facing, terminal cancer, predominant, gratitude. Yes, there are many medical terms. However, believe it or not, I would say maybe except for encephalitis, these words are all pretty well known. Uh, encephalitis and maybe geometrical hallucinations. These are a little bit more difficult. Everything else you guys, uh, I would like you to know. You don't have to memorize them, uh, but there are good words, that's for sure. So that's the first story here. I'm going to go right to DDM 273. Hold on a second. I'll take questions after I give the summaries. Uh, DDM 273 was Turkey Day. And once again, the first part really focused on the history of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. David, as you can see, is from New York. Uh, he was working, he missed it, but hopefully next year he'll get the chance to see it. If I can go to New York City, I would definitely want to see it. But I must remind you, parades, uh, yeah, of course, as an adult, we can watch parades, but mostly parades are for children. Uh, they're for kids, and uh, when I was a child, I loved watching the parade every year. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So this is the history of the parade. And then let's zoom in. Let's get closer. Let's get a close-up of the balloons. And unique to the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade are these giant balloons, these really huge balloons. And they're showing us a couple of the balloons and their preparations for the parade. And it was just kind of interesting. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Vocabulary, a century in the making, line the streets, and you see the people here to the right and to the left, to the right and to the left. They're lining the streets, watching the Snoopy balloon go by. Uh, these are the handlers down below. Um, unveiled showcase. This is literally unveiling. Helium, that's what they put in the balloon. We say route and we say root. We do say both. Uh, as we studied in Seinfeld, 77th, here we go. This is where the parade starts and uh, the Thanksgiving Eve party at uh, Dr. Watley's. The parade starts there. Um, televised, put on TV nationally across the nation. Crowds, a sneak peek, the preps, preparations, hoist, additions, taking center stage, handlers, these people holding the ropes are handlers, and that's what Mr. Pitt wants to be. Wind gusts, making sure shapes put into, 
is a job in itself. Great expression. To wow, this was a verb, to wow somebody, a matter of weeks, and to make it. Very common expression. Let me go back to DDM 272, which was Seinfeld. First scene was the cobblers. Kramer is dropping off a box full of Jerry's sneakers. The next scene, Mr. Pitt's house. Elaine has big band music on, and Mr. Pitt, her boss, enters. And then outside of Jerry's house, Jerry and George are walking towards George's new car. The glossary, without you, without you in this case means thanks to you. Without you, I couldn't be here. Thanks to you, I am here. A Peter Pan complex, a.k.a. Peter Pan syndrome, a.k.a. means also known as. Also known as. Good point, Miguel. Uh, no rush. What's with what's with your hair? I woke up this morning. My hair looks pretty bad. And if I had a video camera, you could say to me, what's with your hair? Ceiling. Sticking out. Right now my hair is sticking out every which way. It's actually sticking up every which way. An electrician. To blow, explode. Pretzels. I'm not a fan. What in blazes? What in hell? What in the hell? What on earth? Big band, a type of music. To man. That's a verb. So we had some interesting verbs. To wow and to man. These are very good verbs. Spots, left, stern, forbade. Mr. Pitt said forbad, which is okay, but most Americans do say forbade. We're associated with the common man. To make up, to make up has several possible meanings. In this case, as a phrasal verb, it means to create. Of all the da, 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 pick, settle on, don't you see? That's the genius of it. To play is a cakewalk is really simple and gummy. And I'm going to go right to DDM 274, continuing. Jerry's apartment, Jerry tosses his gummy sneakers on the floor. Remember, as we studied a couple weeks ago, Americans, almost all, wear their shoes inside the house, gummy or not. The mom and pop store, mom and pop are talking to the electrician about the faulty wiring in the ceiling. The wires are sticking out every which way. We're in John Voight's car. George is humming that song. The song's called Everybody's Talking. And back to the glossary. Very short this time. To work a club. We also say uh, worked a club. We can say uh, a businessman worked the room to work a party. It means to meet everybody and to talk to everybody and to get those people to like you. So as an entertainer, to entertain everybody, to make the people like you. As a business person, to talk to everybody and build your network. That's the idea. Boss, excellent, is in violation of some code or law is breaking the law close you up shut you down it's funny that up and down can be used in the same nuance put the top up we can also say put the top down that's possible too uh, and glove box that's the storage box so those were the four lessons and uh, questions about any of those lessons anything don't be shy. Too much information. Sergey, go ahead. Sergey, Gustavo, Adriana. That's the order. Sergey, I can't hear you. Shame. I know you don't like uh, diphthongs. I know that. <laughs> uh, 
talk about uh, some, uh, you know, the same, uh, some words, uh, you know, they are pronounced uh, the same, uh, for example, uh, you can write it down, for example, or, water, bolster, bolster. Um, spell it, Sergey, because once again, the microphone connection is not the greatest. Let me, Gustavo, please mute your microphone for a second. Go, one more time, Sergey, the words again. Okay. Water, 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 poster, poster. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sharing my screen. Yeah. Uh, is this right? Okay, okay. I, also, I'm, I'm talking about vote, water, water. Spell it. Uh, V-O-T-E-R. V, ah, excuse me. V-O-T-E-R. Ah, uh, voter. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, voter. Yes. Uh, and uh, for example, so, as so, so, or rosta, rosta, R-O-S-T-E-R. Mm-hmm. Not that kind of... Uh, Take a uh, out. Ah, oh, roster, okay. roster. Okay. Okay. These are all different. This is a great question. Uh, these are all different sounds. Uh, and let me make this smaller. So water I, is. Water, a, take it out. I'm not talking about water. Take it out. Okay. So poster is an O. Voter is an O, oops, um, and so and so, these are both O, uh, come on, I hate this, these are both O for those, but roster uh, is actually an A-W, uh, so poster and roster um, are quite different, although they look the same, isn't that terrible, and this is the cruel thing about uh, English, is sometimes you just need to know. Uh, poster, roster, poster, roster, um, and this one, voter. So voter and poster are going to be the same, the vowel sounds, and of course, so I'll get rid of these two. Um, uh, but we can say promoter, voter, um, yeah. So the the I'll leave this one out too. I'll make it really small. These two, unfortunately, have totally different vowel sounds. Now, how do you know that? You have to listen to the American, and then you learn the spelling later. That's, that's really the only way. Now, when it, and let me say something about diphthongs, too. When we pronounce something perfectly, there tends to be a diphthong, a, lo a long vowel. So, for example, poster. If we emphasize the pronunciation po oster, po poster, and that would be a diphthong. But when we say it quickly, poster, poster, we don't really finish the diphthong, just the first part. Roster, it's not a diphthong, it's just an aw ah sound. Does that answer your question, Sergey? Yeah, the same, uh, you don't say most, you say most. Yeah, exactly. We could say most, most. That's perfect pronunciation, but in daily English, we don't. We say most, most, most. And you don't, you don't say over, you say over. Exactly. That's exactly right. You could, but we usually don't. 98% of the time, we don't. And you don't say volt, you say volt. Spell it. Ah, V-O-L-T. Ah, V-O-L-T. V-O-L-T. Ah, that's right. We don't say volt. We say volt. 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 What's okay. the voltage? Yeah, we'll say like voltage. Voltage. What's the voltage? Yeah, voltage is the pronunciation, not the same. Voltage. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, no, no, no. It's the same. Uh, volt and voltage would be the same in America. Volt and voltage. Uh, okay. But when we say volt, we almost always say volts. Uh, okay. Thank you. Yeah.
Nice. All right, Gustavo, go ahead. Gustavo? Uh, yes. Uh, I have a, a, daf, uh, a daf about preposition. Okay. Uh, what's the difference of meaning uh, between uh, the verbs to, to call and to call up or to close or uh, to close up? Yeah, great question. To call, to call up, to close, and to close up. close up. Okay, so almost always when we use the word up, it just is used to emphasize the verb, okay? So it's used to make this verb stronger. So call me, call me up, do it. Close the door. Close up the door. If you say close up the door, really tight, very secure. Uh, clean okay. your room. Clean up your room. Clean your room. Just do a little bit. Just do it so it's okay. Clean up your room. Make it perfect. Make it really nice. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, I understand. And David asks, is, is adding out. And out usually has the same nuance too. Up and out. Oops. Uh, are usually added, not always, but usually added to emphasize the verb, to emphasize the verb. Okay. It's a great question. Okay, I understand. Excellent. Adriana, you're next. So, so you can, so man is a, is a verb or, or it's with something else, to man, man, yeah. Like manhandling or man. So right. So when I make my videos, you might wonder who mans the camera. Oh, okay. Yep. Who shoots the camera? Who takes care of the camera? Who handles the camera? Who operates the camera? Same thing. It's some something manual. That's the idea to manually put your hands on. So the idea of to to man is to put your hands on in order to operate. Okay. So as a doctor, when you use uh, the cameras inside the body, who mans the camera? Oh, okay. Okay. Okay? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Julia, you're next. Go ahead. Shane, actually, I have uh, three questions from one DDM. It's 274. Okay. 274. Uh, the first one, uh, the dialogue uh, between Jerry and George about why he wasn't invited into the party. Um, it's uh, the, where, where George uh, answers, that's the genius part. Yep. Yes. Uh, the Jerry's wrote, hey, why would you call someone up and ask them? Why we cannot use ask him? Because someone, him, it doesn't it mean that the person is one? Okay, so this is a great question. Uh -huh. This is a, a, we talked about this a little bit yesterday. Um, what, let's first of all talk with them. What does them mean? Is them plural or singular? Plural. The answer is both. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? Um, them can be used as singular when we do not know the sex of the person. So for example, um, uh, Julia is mad at her boss. They told her to work on Saturday. Okay? Um, and this, this is a little bit awkward, but anyway, it works. It's the right idea. We don't know if her boss is male or female, but we know she has one boss. But anyway, her boss told her to work on Saturday. In this case, we could say they. Okay? Yeah, I get it. This is because he doesn't know the sex of the person. No, no, no. He's saying anyone, anyone, male or female, someone. Yes, male. That's why he. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Because if you use him, it's uh, it means someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this is yeah. man. I mean, yeah. People okay. are sensitive. 
Okay, I understood. And the next one, uh, the word, you made a big explanation about the accept word, but don't, can we use uh, accept the preposition accept of? Accept of? Mm. Yeah. Mm. I don't think so. All was there except of Alex, for example. Yeah, I don't think we... All were there. I'm going to say no, but let me see here. Yeah, I'm going to say no. Uh, they have a lot of cases here. This is not right. Uh, translate. Yeah, these are not English. No. I think... Ah, yeah, except, of course. No. Um, no. I'm going to say no, you can't. But I used cut chain. <laughs> you must change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, thank you. And the last one, the last uh, sentence of this DDM. Yeah, you better run. Why we cannot, why we don't, we did, we, we cannot say, yeah, you, you would better run, you will better run. Why we have, why, why we use, you had better run. You, you yeah, explained that okay. he should be head better. Uh -huh. yeah. So you better run is what he says. Grammatically, he should have said you had better run. So let's write those down. So you better run. It's not wrong. You had better run. You, what was the other one? You will better run. You would better run. Okay, would better run. Okay, so you would better, you cannot use that together. You will better, you cannot use those together. Um, what does it mean to, what does it mean better? This is, uh, so it, it's the right, the right, uh, how to say it? What does better mean? What nuance does better have? Anybody? The right choice. No. You have two choices. You can uh, stay here or you can run. That's pretty good. I'll take that. Better off. Better has the nuance of choice, and it also has the nuance of should. Okay. So you would should doesn't work. You will should doesn't work. That's why we can't use it together. The nuance of the word better means should. Okay? You had should. What does this mean? Had better. It's redundant. Had and had better actually means should. So it's like you had should or you should should. It's kind of redundant, but that's what we say. You had better. Um, if I, and the nuance is, if I were you, I would run. That's the nuance of this sentence. You better run is grammatically incorrect. We need to say you had better run. This is the pattern, Kitchen, had better. Does it the collocation had better? Absolutely, absolutely collocation. Okay. Right. Okay, thank you. Let's go look up uh, better. And let's go to the news. Uh, that's a lot better. Uh, trying to do better. A little better. These are all the different usages. Polling better. Looking better. Yeah, these are all different usages. Um, I guess we have to use had better. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, here's a grammar story. Um, I yeah, I'm not finding exactly what I want, but uh, yeah, collocation is the right idea to think about it. Um, don't forget, um, it's better. Um, uh, uh, snow is better than ice. Of course, we have this nuance, comparison, comparison. Um, but here, the nuance is should, should.
So we have basically two meanings for the word. Oops, I'm not showing you. We're, we're basically, we have two meanings for this word, two common meanings. Uh, it's better. Uh, snow is better than ice. Um, it's, it means uh, 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 nicer or preferred, preference, preferred. Uh, but here, in these cases, uh, it, it has to mean should, should, should. So you had better means you should run. You ought to run. So had better with, with the verb is correct, is yes, with the collocation, yes? We need the, mm -hmm. the root verb, that's right. Okay? Yeah, thank you. I saw lots of other uh, preferable, thank you. David has a question here. Hold on a second. Ah, uh, what? Yeah, this is a good question. We've talked about this before, too. Um, sometimes we call cars she. Um, and why do we call she? What can we call she? Uh, it's, a, it's, first of all, guys do it. Um, I guess women might call something a she or a he, too. Um, I'm not a woman, so I don't really know. But I'll tell you from a guy's perspective. If it is uh, red, um, if it is, I can't type it all, uh, beautiful, um, if we need, the man needs to take care of it like a baby, then we call it a she. So a, a sports car, she. A boat, she. Um, and even a motorcycle could be a she. Now, uh, if we're talking about a, a, like a big monster truck, like uh, the Ford Raptor, which is my favorite truck, um, I wouldn't call that a she. Uh, it's possible. I would prefer to call it a he because uh, it's a little bit, so to speak, tougher. And it can get dirty. That's okay. But uh, a sports car, you don't want it to get dirty. You always want it to be clean. And you want to have it keep it really nice and keep it really pretty. In that case, we call it a she. That's the idea. Those types of things we call a she. Does that make sense, David? Yes, Shane. Thank you. You bet. Do you guys know the Ford Raptor? <laughs> I love this. They don't make it anymore. This is my favorite truck. It's a man's truck. Look at that beautiful thing. God. Yeah, if you have some some seconds, just show me the, the what you are trying to refer. This one. With, what? It'll pop up in a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't like those trucks. Oh, How David, much come on. It cost? No, I have a small a small car. When they put those trucks. On, David. Inside, do you know Fiesta? Double. I have a small car and I, and I got scared. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is what I have. This is the smallest car in America. That's what I have. <laughs> and when a Ford Raptor comes next to it, um, yeah, it, it, it's like an ant and an elephant. <laughs> the Ford uh, Raptor, I think, is about 50000 Ford Raptor. Ooh. Yeah, it's really expensive. Oh, they, it starts at forty thousand, but believe me, in a minute you'll be at fifty. I don't know. There must be a, a well, but I don't know. Let me let me let me look. Oh, I love this car. Sorry, guys. You guys got to ask questions, otherwise I'll be continuing to look. <laughs> Only Chuck okay. Norris can own the true truck. Well, that's possible. <laughs> Chuck Norris invented the internet, so. I saw many of those uh, trucks, but to tell you the truth, all of them are clean and look like never used for, for, for the it, purpose. You know, that's that's it's so funny to me um, seeing people drive around in these trucks everywhere because 
nobody uses them as they're supposed to be used. Yeah. These are for working and for moving things, and everybody just drives them in the city, wasting gas. Um, it's really, it's really, uh, you know, Freud, Sigmund Freud would have a very interesting discussion with these people. Um, yeah, if you have a truck like this. You should be driving in the mountains and driving in the woods and carrying wood and stone in the back and plowing snow. You should be using it, not just because it's pretty. <laughs> but if you get a scratch, then you might cry the whole night. Well, those babies in the city would cry, but yeah. that's what you get the truck for. <laughs> of course you're going to have a scratch. It's a, it's a man vehicle. It's a man vehicle. Yeah. I, I, I had a, when I was in Korea, I had this, uh, it's called a Corando Jeep, not this, this is the ugly, stupid one, uh, and my car was great, I love, this is exactly what I had, um, and I, there, I had so many scratches on this thing, and the, in the back, it was full of, uh, wood, I would carry wood back there, and I used to go, uh, get this truck so dirty. This is how you're supposed to drive. Not in the city, but in the uh, in the country. And oh boy, I loved it. That I had a great time uh, with that car. Yeah, in the mountain stream. There we go. In the water, things like that. Ah, oh, I had loved it. Go ahead, David. Sorry. That car is uh, the use the gas like um, like I use my. Mouthwash. <laughs> like, oh yeah, you can you can watch the gas go down, down, down. That's for sure. That's for sure. More I mean, questions. I like the I like the car. I like the car, but it's hard to my maintenance if you're not working in the in the um, in the country, you know. Oh, you mean the trucks? Yeah. Yeah, but actually, I like those kind of cars, and I like the um, these kind of bikes, but it's four wheeler bike. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Quad. We call them four wheelers or quad runners. Yeah, like one of those to go in the woods, or yeah, you know, then one of those other big trucks to put the my hunting prey. Exactly. How you say? Yes. Hunting equipment. Yeah, and everything like. The the how you say how you call the the thing that you go to to hunt like once the you, rifle? you are no 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 the the meat the ah the the carcass the yeah the the deer yeah put the deer there in the trunk and then the four wheeler the the thing yep uh, and then go home that's it no that and, and you know what that that's a great point uh, in the woods when you uh, uh, when you get a deer, that's one of the biggest problems is getting the deer out of the woods. Uh, and uh, I know some of you don't like hunting, but that's reality. We go hunting. And uh, if you have a quad runner, it's perfect for hauling a deer. Uh, or if, if somebody's hurt in the woods, I mean, these quad runners are really good in the country. And, of course, they're fun to drive. They're lots of fun. But they're dangerous. you got to be careful. Yeah, well... That's one of my dreams I have to accomplish. What that the one heck of my is this? Goals. This is a crazy American. <laughs> oh, I have to have one, uh, one of the strokes. One of the, I forgot the name again. This motorcycles. Yeah. Uh, bikes. The quad runner. In the game, quad runner. And I have to go hunt. And then I uh, have big uh, equipment for, to go to hunt. That's my goal. So you'll you'll be my hunt. neighbor. Oh, Shane, let's go on tomorrow. That'd okay. be excellent. I'd love it. I'd love it. Oh, my gosh. Look yeah, at that. Perfect. Yeah. Sorry, I gave you an extra D. Oh, let me go back here and look. Unless you have at least two pairs of spare cowboy boots in the truck, that's not the real deal. I agree, uh, Miguel. If, if you're going to have a truck... Uh, you better have some cowboy boots and maybe even a cowboy hat. <laughs> yeah.
More questions. More questions. Uh, see, now I want to. Now I can't wait to move. Go ahead, Marek. Yeah, I have uh, maybe question and comment. Uh, Absolutely. I'm not sure about uh, Thomas the tank engine because uh, I wasn't. At ch uh, yeah, when I was child, I was not here. Tank engine. What it actually means? Okay. It's a tank. Yep. Is such a thing like tank engine? Yeah, I'm going to show you here. So first of all, he's talking about, where the hell is it? Thomas the Tank Engine. Um, and I didn't put a picture here, did I? Oh, oh I saw uh, an internet, but actually I'd like to know uh, what it, uh, what image it creates uh, in you, I would yeah. say. So, so it's it's a steam engine. You know, you know the steam engine, right? Yes, but it looked uh, for me like locomotive. Uh, oh, okay. Right. Right. So this is the idea. So when we see, uh, let me get a bigger picture. Actually, this is a good one. So this part here, the round part. I'm going to try and make this bigger, and I'll explain the science a little bit. Okay. So let me get a pen. Make sure I got a good color. Okay, so this part here is actually the engine, and in here it gets really hot, and it boils the water, and then the water, the steam comes out here after it goes to the cylinders and moves the wheels. Okay, but the problem is, where do you keep the water? So, um, what what these what tank engines do? is they actually like a gas tank they have a water tank and this is the water tank in here they keep the water and when the when the tank engine comes through the steam doesn't really come out here it goes back into the tank so they recycle the water so the idea of a tank engine it's a water recycling steam engine if we say a steam engine, they can only use the water one time and the water goes away. But a tank engine recycles the steam and uses the steam again and again. Does that make sense? It puts it Oh, yes, the very tank. much. Yeah. It, it, now I know what tank engine is because, uh, yeah, I saw this locomotive, but why call it tank engine uh, yeah yep they have two types and um, and sometimes a tank engine is better sometimes a steam engine is better actually if you're going up a mountain a steam engine is better because recycling requires energy but if you're going a long distance a tank engine is better because you can recycle the water and go further that's the idea yeah, and uh, when I uh, read it after uh, the whole dictation, it says, uh, kind of strange, I, I didn't pay attention to this uh, two sentences, uh, Pillsbury Doughboy will also wow, oh, wow, yes. tens of thousands across America. Tens of thousands? That's not such a big number. I don't know why they use it. Ten. Really? <laughs> it's such a Am great... I wrong or what? <laughs> no, that's that's a really great point. Uh, especially since they said fifty million people are going to yeah. watch it, and then they say, "Wow, tens of thousands." Um, yeah, yeah, it should have been hundreds of thousands. How? Yeah, hundreds at least. And another thing is this Thomas tank engine. Is the heaviest balloon, mm. okay? It weighs more than 1,000 pounds, and moving it, they suggest that it's hard to move this balloon because it's heavy. And I don't agree with that. It's heavy to move because it's the lighter, it's the biggest, not the heaviest. Oh, you are so analytical. I, I know I, I'm just, uh, yeah, but uh, I... <laughs> just, when you think at certain point, what the heck, why? Okay. Um, no, I think maybe you're right. Me. It's to be honest, it's not as big as the Spider-Man, so it's yeah. not that difficult. I agree. It sounds like it would be work, but at the end of the day, it's helium. 
It's in really? the air, just like anything yeah. else. So it's hard to control because it's the biggest, not the heaviest. They, they, they but they mentioned that. They... They mentioned that it, the the weight was like I don't know how many tons. Yeah, but like but but anyway, but once it's in the air, it's still the same thing. It's a balloon. So balloon. whether the balloon weighs five pounds uh, or a thousand yeah. pounds, in the air, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's, it's like, like a, a lighter. It just pulls up harder. Right, so right, it's right. Harder to control. It's lighter. And that's why if you look, if you look at the picture down here, um, the weight uh, doesn't matter um, because whoa, because the, they use these cars. These keep it on the ground. The people do not keep it on the ground. No, they don't need more people. They, it's always the same number of people, and it's just you know they need five people for this part, five people for this part. Five people for the back, five people for this part. So actually the number of people is almost always the same because the weight doesn't matter. Um, now the mass makes it difficult. So for the mass, they use cars. And under each float, they're going to have these vehicles and they are uh, to control the mass. But the actual turning to the right and to the left it's pretty easy. Um, and it, you can think about this. Uh, hold on a second. Let me go to this. Okay. Uh, second. Ah, I got too many different controllers here. Um, okay. I'm going to go to a, a hanging girder if I can find that. Hanging. Uh, actually, let's find a girder. So if you look at a girder, this is a, a girder, a steel girder. Is this easy to move? Can you turn this? Mm -hmm. no. Really? No, no, no. No, you I can't, can't right? It's impossible, right? <laughs> yeah. But what about this? Can you turn this? Mm -hmm. This is easy. Yeah. If it's hanging... It's easy to control. The mass, the weight is the same. Now, to control the mass, we have to have this chain. This chain supports the mass, the weight. But turning it is easy. That's, that's easy. Um, and the same thing with a balloon. To control the mass of the balloon, we need the cars at the bottom to control the mass. But the turning is very, very simple. Does that make sense, you guys? I, this isn't a physics class, but we're yeah. getting there. <laughs> Sorry for the cherry picking, but somehow we. <laughs> no, no, that's that's fine. And see, that's it, David. If suddenly there's only one person holding the balloon, he can still control it um, as long as the cars are there. The cars need to be there. If the cars are not there, then we have a problem with the mass. Just like if the chain is not here then we cannot move the girder. It's, it's impossible. I'm not sure. I'll have to read about it because I'm not completely <laughs> convinced. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I, and I'm not a good science teacher, so I can't give you the proper rules. <laughs> I'm an English coach. Damn it, Marek. I'm not inviting you next time. <laughs> Sorry, Shane, I shouldn't <laughs> touch the topic. <laughs> and I won't touch the other. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Did you get my email? Yes, I did. No, you, <laughs> would, you shouldn't worry about this. That's why I sent the email. <laughs> Make more questions, more questions. Got Shane, uh, another one question, can I? Yeah. Please tell me the most. Uh, okay, uh, with the word violation of the most the often words which are used with the violation word. Ah, are you talking about collocation with violation? I'd say popular. Yes. yes, yes. Because I understood about the violation of code, and we cannot use it about if we uh, if we want to say about the law because we. Uh, we say against the law, the law. Yes. Oh no, we can Not say violation of law. law. No problem. 
Como é que é? Yes. Uhum. Uh, regulation of rules. Yes. Rules, regulations, sure. Mm. Okay. Yep, no problem, no problem. He violated the rules, the regulations, yes. So, and and uh, is this um, often used? Yeah, how to say it? <laughs> oh, sure. Do, do, do Americans use this uh, word? So in daily English, in daily yes, yeah, in uh -huh. daily English, we're gonna say he broke. He broke uh, the law. Uh, he broke the rules. That's gonna be daily English. But technically, uh, so as a as a you know construction or electrician, uh, construction uh, electrician, um, or as a, a a police officer, police, and, and that situation violate uh, is going to be very uh, common. Uh, but in daily English, you know, Jim, John, and, and Joe, they're going to say broke. Okay, thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. You don't sound satisfied. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just thinking, can I use this word to my daily speaking? in my daily speech for example but and I I, I, I decided yes I can yeah you can <laughs> uh, and once again I, I think broke is better but definitely you can use it okay okay also with broke <laughs> okay and let's just go um, let's let's do this let's watch this um, let's go back to the internet and let's say uh, he broke the law, and we have 329,000, and he violated, oops, violated the law, 97,000. So uh, about three, four more times more common. Now remember, uh, Google shows us written English, not really spoken English, so I would guess in spoken English, Broke is much more common. Right now, it looks like it's about three to one, maybe four to one, broke, violate. And I'm guessing in speaking, it's probably six to one, maybe seven to one. Broke is more common. Okay? Yes, but for example, if I, I in business in English, for example, in business, yeah, English, business English, English, which one is? Technical. So in that case, uh, violation. violation. Right, is going to be better. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. May I ask one more question, Shay? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, regarding awakenings. Yep. Uh, there is a sentence. His 1973 book, Awakenings, recounted his efforts. When he says recounted his efforts. Can we uh, eliminate first uh, T, recounted his efforts? Yes, uh, recounted his efforts. Absolutely, we can cancel the T. Yes. We can, yeah. Oh, okay. Recounted his efforts. I would say um, this guy is a, the person who's reading it is being a narrator. So their pronunciation is going to be pretty accurate. But if the guy's just talking, I would say it's going to be much more common to get rid of the T. Uh, is it common? Oh, well, nobody Not speaks. really. No, no. Nobody says often recounted. Right. right. <laughs> anyway. Despite it's not being common, I would still guess most people would not pronounce the T. I see. Thank you. Yep. Hey Matt, how's it going? Not too bad, except uh, my bus arrived really late and I had a 40 minute delay, and that's why I'm so late to the lesson today. Oh man, uh, those, you, you should. Uh, what, what, what was the problem? The weather or why? Um, no, today is the day where they organize this Christmas parade. 
you know, this opening of the Christmas season in Poland, ah. and they are marking it with a parade. So some buses are taken out of circulation today, but there was no information on this particular bus being uh, called in today as well. So it's uh, uh, it was a miscommunication between oh, me and uh, and uh, yeah, city public transportation. Oh, well, that's not cool. <laughs> no, it's actually very wrong. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's Christmas season, so that's a good. Yeah. Thing. Oh yeah, that's no the parade itself because me and my girlfriend went to see it and that was pretty cool when they were um, the the Christmas lights on the illumination very nice. Oh, that's great! It was a nighttime parade. Yeah. Well, it was uh well um the darkness it has fallen <laughs> yeah. by the time it was five and and worse. So. Did you see Santa? Yeah, it was dark. But no, he was way up there, <laughs> like on on the, on the stage, and oh, I see. Uh, we didn't hear him. But it wasn't real Santa. I think he spoke Polish. Oh, it was a yeah. Well, no, it, Santa speaks many languages. Oh, that's true. <laughs> hmm. But his Polish was too good. Oh, right. maybe. <laughs> then again, I only made out I only made out one word, so maybe it wasn't. <laughs> maybe he maybe he has <laughs> vodka. <laughs> Shane, I have a question. Uh, yes, Adrian. When, when when you're saying that it's dark or it's light, you say um when you when you say that the day is dark, you say at it's dusk or or it's better to say dark or, or it doesn't matter. So dusk is right when the sun disappears uh, and it's not pitch black. So it's like uh, nowadays for me. 4.30 to 5 p.m. is dusk. Okay. So it's still, you can see outside, but there is no sun. The sun is gone, but it's not black yet. That's dusk, okay? Uh-huh. Uh, and then about 6, I'm sorry, about 5.30 p.m., we can say uh, darkness has fallen. Uh, and it's not really nighttime. Like Matt said, it's not really night, but anyway, it's black. So, yeah. Darkness has fallen. It's black out. It's dark out. It's perfect. Okay. And um, and otherwise, is it during like during the day, but it's really kind of um, gray. Not much sun. You say it's just like uh, cloudy or. Yep. You could say it's gray. It's totally gray. Uh, there's no sun today. Heavy clouds. Thick clouds. Lots of clouds today. No sunshine. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. No other questions? You guys are too easy. Well, I was I was thinking that he said that he was uh, he knew he was going to die and then he started talking about things we all know we're going to die since the time we are born, so that's not news. <laughs> that's not news, but once again, you know as well, uh, Terminal, they're pretty accurate at guessing how many months uh, sometimes. But, but you never know. I mean, you could be here, and the next second you can be gone. You never know. That's you true. never know. That's true, yeah, yeah. Anything can happen, that's for sure. Yeah. Let's do a little bit of role play and then I'm gonna scoot. Um, I'm gonna do the same one I did yesterday. And Miguel, are you leaving? Hold on a second. Uh, I'm gonna break these things. This is a little bit long, so just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get get uh, going here, and I'm gonna give everybody a, a pretty good section. Uh, let's start with Miguel at the top. You can't go, uh, and then Adriana, and then Alex, and then David. So we're gonna go step by step. I'll give you some sections here with colors too. So once again, Miguel, this section, start us off, please.
Is Miguel gone already? Ooh, almost. I was about to click. <laughs> you want me to read? Please. Okay. Good, good. Okay, Turkey Day. Turkey Day. Uh, Thursday, millions will watch Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, a tradition that spent nearly a century in the making. Macy's three-hour Thanksgiving Day Parade will start at, uh, at, uh, at 9 a.m. Eastern this Thursday. Nearly 3.5 million will line the streets of New York. Another 50 million will watch it at home. Excellent job. Go take go go uh, go leave. Goodbye, Miguel. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> Excellent job. Let me go right to Adriana. Thanks, Miguel. Thank you. The, okay, so Naomi? Yes. The tradition started in 1924. The department store used animals from the Central Park Zoo. Three years later, Macy's unveiled its first giant balloon, Felix the Cat. In 1934, Disney joined the parade with the first Mickey Mouse balloon. Very good. David, I'm sorry, Alex, you're up next. <clears throat> because of World War II, the parade took a two-year break in 1942 to save rubber and helium for the war. The parade started again in 1945 and followed the same road until uh, 2008. Very good. David, next. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to make you wait. Um, uh, because of the World War II... Uh, right below, right below, David. Um, where, is, where is my part? The event. Oh, the event was televised on CBS on 1948. A few years later, NBC became the official broadcaster of the event and has televised it nationally for the past 60 years. Very good, very good. Let me go to Guria. Guria, give me uh, these three sections. Mm -hmm. Crowds got a sneak peek at the preps for the annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, specifically the new stars of the show. It takes a team of dozens on my left, we clear on the right. Very good. Gustavo, do the next couple. Uh, to hoist these 50 foot balloons, one, two, and fly them across city field has families watched in amazing, amazement. Oh, it's exciting. Very exciting. A my granddaughter, Colette, is here to see Thomas go up in the air. In the air. Yeah, okay, good, good. Got that last part. Good, good. Excellent job. Let me have Ma Maria. Hi, Maria. Maria, I want you to read uh, these three lines. Oh, Maria, your microphone is off. You need to click your microphone. Oh, maybe Maria stepped away. Okay, Santa, can you read these next three lines, please? Oh. Yeah, I can hardly hear you. Go ahead, Santa. From Paddington? Or uh, so it's pretty. All right, so it's pretty cool. It's pretty once-in-a-lifetime experience, I guess. But this Saturday is not just about the incredible sights. It's about testing out these six new dishes like Paddington Bear. Keep going. All right, Paddington Bear has the biggest suitcase ever seen in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Great job. Very good, very good. And let me have uh, Yagmer. Yagmer, I want uh, this section here.
they're taking center stage at this year's Macy's Day Parade. Handlers are preparing for wind gusts and making sure these special shapes are problem free for the big day. It's amazing how much work these people put into helping. Is that how Yagmar really sounds? No, that's it's my girlfriend's computer. <laughs> I, I always I always do this when I'm uh, connecting from somebody else's computer. I put their names as my name in case something weird happens, right? Right. And my, by the way, my girlfriend is interested in joining the course. Tell take, have her have her uh, give her some of the lessons that you've studied and see if she likes it. Yeah, I will. I will do that. Let me go back to Maria just to make sure. Some people join Maria and they don't want to talk. I understand. Uh, but if you do want to talk, I'll give you a chance to ask any questions too. Um, I don't know if you can hear me, but I think you probably can. So I just want to say once again, welcome. And your microphone is still off, so I'm assuming you are not going to talk today. That's fine. Uh, let me go back here and help some people with some pronunciation. A couple of people did really good. Um, Miguel, no problem. Let me go to Adriana. Now, just because some of you have lots of yellow doesn't mean you're uh, any better or any worse than anybody. Um, it's just things that I noticed. Uh, you said the tradition, which is okay, but give me a the anyway. The tradition. The tradition. Good. Careful with the TR. The tradition. The tradition. Started in 1924. Started in 1924. Animals. Animals. Yeah, I want that short A. Uh, the department store used animals. The department store used animals. From the Central Park Zoo. For the Central Park Zoo. Perfect. Three years later. Three years later. Excellent, yeah. So you're, you're it's the R cluster, but you sounded really good there. Good. Lots of people want to say Felix, and they want to say Helium, which is actually usually correct in many other languages. But unfortunately, <laughs> in America, we change it. Felix and Helium. Yeah, Felix the cat and balloon. Yes, now, balloon. For, for, exactly. For this word, everybody, and it comes up a lot, lots of people, just say balloon, balloon. Balloon. Do you like balloons? Yep. <laughs> Great. <laughs> David, before you go, helium. David's already gone. He's out the door. David's one of the hardest working guys I know. So, so once again, everybody, just remember, helium, helium. Let me go to Gulia. Uh, this is Gulia, I think. Is this Gulia on? Oh, I think this was David too. I can't remember. Anyway, on CBS and has televised. Yes. Was it? It you? was David, but no, it did. But I can. On has televised. Excellent. There you go. Much better than David. <laughs> <laughs> Your section was really good. Your section was great. Let me go to Gustavo. Fifty-foot balloons. Yes. 50 foot balloons. Yeah, and once again, don't say balloons, say balloons, balloons. 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 50 foot balloons. 50 foot balloons. Excellent job. Uh, fly them across. Fly them across. Good. Give me more TH. Them. Then. Fly them across. Fly them across. Across. This is A W. Across. Across. A little bit shorter. Cross. Cross. Yeah, I'm getting more O. Cross. Remember, when we do the A-W sound, Cross. these are your upper teeth, and these are your lower teeth. And with your tongue, you want to put your tongue, your tongue usually sits like this, but I want you to put your tongue in the soft part of the lower jaw and I want you to bring your jaw down so it's like ah oh, keep your tongue down there ah oh. close try that again ah oh. oh good and don't move keep it there 
across. Across. Yeah, that sounded better. Don't move your tongue. Keep your tongue as low as possible. Yeah. Fly them across. Fly them across. Much better. Excellent job. Don't leave out the k. Exciting. Exciting. Thomas. 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 Now you sound like an Amerikansky. Thomas. Perfect American pronunciation, Gustavo. <laughs> Great job, guys. Any Thank final you. questions? Thank you very much for joining me. Um, don't forget, use the uh, box.com area to ask any questions that you have. And uh, use these Hangouts with me to really ask things about pronunciation and stuff. We have Miguel and Clive who are here to help you guys. And I'm still looking for another uh, teacher. It's really difficult finding somebody who is uh, oh, well, good enough. Um, I was really lucky to, fly, to find those guys. We had, uh, what's her name? What's her name? I forgot the woman's name that we had. Help me out, somebody. Um, Carrie, thank you, Carrie. That's right, Carrie. Carrie. Yeah. yeah, Carrie was great. Uh, and hopefully, if we're lucky, she'll be back maybe in February or March. Um, but uh, I kind of doubt it. But I hope she does come back. But it's really difficult. I got really lucky the first time I looked for teachers. I got really lucky. Now I'm looking. This is my third time, and I still haven't found anybody who's uh, close to being qualified. So uh, I'm looking. It's not easy. I'll do my best, though. And once again, it's a bonus for you guys. It's free. So that's pretty cool stuff. So I want to get that to you as soon as possible. You guys are still saying hi? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, hi, Santa. Hi. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Have a fantastic uh, week or two. Christmas is coming up. And uh, if I don't see you in the next next week's Hangout, uh, I do want to say Merry Christmas to you. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, and same to you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, Coach Shane. Thank you, Santa. Bye -bye. Thank you, Paul. Bye. Guys, bye. Take care. Have a nice weekend. Bye, guys. Thank you, Coach. Bye-bye, Coach Shane. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care, Yaga. Bye. Take care, Ali. Yeah. <laughs>